Hello everybody, this is Johns Hopkins with Baltimore Heritage and we're back with another of our 5 Minute Histories videos and today I'm on the corner of Howard and Lexington Street downtown and we're going to talk about Stewart's, Stewart's department store behind me. Before we jump into that though, I have to say a quick thanks to all of you who have donated so far and especially those who have donated and help, uh, to help us meet our challenge match. An unbelievably kind donor has uh, offered to match dollar for dollar all new gifts and if you're a returning giver, any amount above what you gave last year. So thank you sincerely to everybody um, who's helping us with that. All right, Stewart's Department Store. Now all of you Hoshel Cohn and Hutzler's fans out there, don't worry, we'll get to you. Um, but today we're going to talk about Stewart's. We've got to start somewhere. I'm down here at Howard and Lexington, the department store hub of uh, Baltimore, or once was. Um, and uh, in Stewart's building got it started in 1900. But before Stewart's was Stewart's, it was Posner's. And let's actually start there. A gentleman named Samuel Posner and his brother Elias uh, moved from New York in 1876 um, to start a department store or a dry goods business, as they called it. Um, Samuel, incidentally, was a drummer for a drummer boy in the Union Army in the Civil War. But he and his brother felt that New York was too crowded and Baltimore offered a great uh, sort of window to trading with the South. So they moved here and with $3,500, they hired six employees and started um, their department store or their dry goods store. By 1900, they had grown from six employees to 600, and the department store was doing such good business that they were able to afford to build this building at a cost of $550,000, a whopping amount back then. Uh, but the building was pretty neat. Architecturally, it is jaw-dropping. It has 150,000 square feet. Uh, it has two and a half miles of aisles for shopping, and it was was fireproof. It, uh, it is made of uh, steel girders and the only wood in the building was uh, in the windows and the doors and the floors and even the wooden floors were encased in concrete. So uh, pretty fire safe there. And it had a dining room on the mezzanine. So a really, uh, really wonderful thing there as well. But just a year later, by 1901, Samuel was petitioning to have his property taxes lowered. He owned this building and a number of other ones on this block um, and apparently had overextended himself. By 1902, he had sold the building um, for $300,000. So he just two years after he built it, he lost $250,000 in the sale. The person who bought it was a gentleman named Lewis Stewart, um, who incidentally was also from New York. He was a railroad magnet turned department store owner. He had taken over a department store in New York called McCready and Company. In 1902, he took over this department store, but did not keep Posner's name. He thought his name sounded just fine on a department store, and so the building became Stewart's department store. He joined a crowded field of department stores um, on this corner, this intersection. Hoshel Cohn, Hutzlers, and Hex, the three H's were already here, and so Stewart had to find his niche. At first, his niche was affordability. Here's a, a, a part of an advertisement from their very first year in 1902. They, they claimed um, they had a unique, unparalleled sale of women's and children's outer garments for summer at phenomenally low prices. One of those was, quote, a fancy striped lawn shirt waist suits and a, a, a $1.98 value for $1.25. So how about that? Um, their first Christmas, they jumped right in. Um, they claimed that they had the brightest, most helpful, and safest Christmas store. I am not sure what was going on at Hutzler's or Hoshel Cone that warranted uh, Stewart claiming he had the safest store, uh, but that's what he claimed. Um, and by 1920, Stewart's uh, was a uh, full-on part of the madness that was the Christmas and holiday season down here. They had an uh, employee choir. They uh, recreated historic Baltimore scenes in miniature in their front windows, and eventually they set up heat lamps on Howard Street so that the window gazers uh, could stay warm. They even claimed the heat lamps were so good that you could go inside, get a bathing suit, and go outside and try it on with, quote, barely a chattering of teeth. I'm not sure if anybody actually took them up on that, but that's what they said. Um, we could spend forever talking about Christmas and the holidays in these department stores, and maybe we should do a video on that, but we have to move on. In a, a serious way, uh, Stewart's was part of the transition in Baltimore and across America from small specialty stores uh, to these purpose-built large department stores. 
One thing Stewart's was a pioneer in is air conditioning. It was the first department store to get it. The year was 1931. One thing it was not a pioneer in, and that was desegregation. Um, it was like the other stores here, most of the other stores, um, at first, uh, black Baltimoreans could sh not shop at all, and only after uh, prolonged struggles, fights, and effort uh, did it reluctantly open to all shoppers. We'll do a video just on that topic for sure. But for those uh, folks who could get in and shop, um, the, uh, the experience apparently was pretty neat. Many people recall the elegant interior, the Georgian Tea Room, or the restaurant that was there called Cookworks, which was apparently pretty good. Um, many um, younger, or maybe not younger, shoppers flocked to the candy counter to get their famous vanilla marshmallows. By the 1950s, Stewart's was joining the other department stores and moving to the suburbs. Its first store was York Road and Northern Parkway, followed by four others, um, Timonium, Westview, Golden Ring, and then eventually Reisterstown Road. By the 1970s, the Stewart's downtown, the building here behind me, was garnering some not so good adjectives. Um, people were using things like stayed and static to describe it. The Baltimore Sun uh, wrote an article that said, while other stores went for youth, Stewart's was long associated with the older, more traditional customer, and they did not mean that in a good way. Um, in 1979, Stewart's followed Hoshel Cone in closing its downtown store. Um, and the building sat vacant for about three years. In 1982, the real estate mogul Harry Weinberg purchased it. For a while, he was uh, thinking of turning it into an art center, sort of like the Torpedo Factory in Alexandria, if you've ever been to that wonderful, wonderful place. Uh, but that never took hold, um, and it sat uh, vacant for years and years. Today, however, it is not vacant. The first floor is still sits vacant, but the upper floors are occupied by Catholic Relief Services, the International Aid Organization, Organization of the Catholic Church. So I'm going to wrap up by uh, uh, asking anybody who has a fond memory of Stewart's or, or maybe a not fond memory, um, send it in. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.